Did you know China is building the equivalent of a high-speed rail track around the Earth twice? Today, we're diving into the incredible world of China's mega-projects. From record-breaking bridges to massive water pipelines, get ready to be impressed and maybe a little terrified by the scale of China's audacious plans for the future. Let's get started. Vanguard's Deck Imagine a skyscraper piece so big it weighs as much as three Statues of Liberty combined. That's exactly what China recently needed to move, a massive 339-meter-tall spar platform costing a cool $100 billion. How do you move something that massive? This is where the dockwise Vanguard, a champion in hauling supersized cargo, comes in. This giant ship, stretching 200 meters long and 70 meters wide, can handle up to 123,000 tons of stuff. But its secret weapon is its special deck. Unlike regular ships, the Vanguard's deck can dive a whopping 27 meters underwater. This incredible feature allows the ship to literally dive under the spar platform, scoop it up in a custom cradle, and then rise back to the surface like a supersized underwater pit crew. The journey itself was an epic adventure. The Vanguard embarked on a 16,600-mile trip, taking nearly two months to sail from the platform's birthplace in Korea to its final destination in Norway. Just imagine the planning involved. Charts, weather checks, and enough supplies to keep the crew happy for all that time at sea. The Vanguard cruised at a steady 24 kilometers per hour, ensuring the platform's safe passage across the ocean. Reaching Norway was another big moment. The Vanguard was positioned super carefully, and its tanks were filled with a massive amount of water, around 11,000 gallons. This allowed the submerged deck to smoothly receive the enormous spar platform. Everything had to be perfectly timed and executed. Any mistake could have been disastrous. This entire operation is a prime example of amazing human achievement. It wasn't just about moving a giant hunk of metal. It was about pushing the limits of what's possible with engineering and planning. The Mine Next up, get ready because we're about to delve into a story that's shaking the world of mining. China's audacious 100 billion mega project in Guinea. China, the world's iron-hungry giant, has a problem. Outdated equipment and a dependence on Australian iron ore. This dependence has caused some serious tension between the two countries. So China set out to find new sources of this precious metal. And this is where we get the star of the show. The Samando Iron Mine, located deep within the Guinea Mountains. This iron deposit is a whopper, boasting a jaw-dropping 2.4 billion metric tons of high-grade 65% iron ore. Pictured as a massive mine, 550 kilometers east of the Guinean capital, cradling two iron gems, Samando North and Samando South. These giants stretch up to 7 kilometers long and 1 kilometer wide, separated by a mere 4 kilometers. Now, here's where things get juicy. Remember how we mentioned Australia being in the picture before? Well, they used to hold Semindao's mining rights, but in a shocking turn of events, China swooped in and secured those rights for itself. This is a game changer. China's bold move has them leading the pack in the global mining race, leaving Australia out in the cold. Talk about a strategic outmaneuver. But there's more. China's aim is to have this massive mine operational by 2025, with a total project value exceeding a whopping $200 billion. Now, you might be thinking, isn't China's economy already huge? You'd be right, but here's the rub. Their industrial technology isn't exactly top-notch. That's why they need so much iron ore, even from Australia. One thing's crystal clear, though. China's determined to break free from its resilience on Australian resources. The Simindo Iron Mine is just the first chapter in this story of securing their future. The question remains, why did Guinea choose China over Australia? The answer to that could have profound consequences and reshape the global mining landscape. TFU Let's now switch to Chengdu Tianfu International Airport, or TFU. This aviation marvel isn't just another airport. It's a gleaming billion-dollar proof of China's commitment to progress. TFU isn't just the region's second international airport. It's a symbol of ambition. Completed in just six years, this phoenix rose from blueprints in 2015 and officially opened its doors in June 2021. Think of the three runways at TFU as the airport's beating heart, keeping the traffic flowing. And the two terminals? Well, they're not your average airport buildings. 
Designed in the graceful shape of the mythical Sunbird, they offer a touch of legend to your travel experience. With the capacity to handle a staggering 60 million passengers and 24,450 tons of cargo annually, TFU is a bustling city in the sky. Here's where things get truly impressive. TFU boasts a massive footprint of 7.6 million square feet, or 700,000 square meters. But don't get too comfortable, their ambitious plans are sky high. The ultimate goal? To become China's third largest airport hub. This means even more runways, terminals, and facilities, solidifying TFU as a major aviation player. However, TFU isn't just an island in the sky, it's meticulously connected to the surrounding network. These are seamless journeys with integrated rail networks, a convenient subway system, and even a personal rapid transit system, all designed to make your travel experience smooth sailing. Interestingly, TFU also offers a whopping 1,500 dorms for personnel, a luxurious 30,000-square-foot lounge for wary travelers, and a hive of diverse operations. So, whether you're a seasoned traveler or simply fascinated by the march of progress, Chengdu Tianfu International Airport is a must-see. It's not just about flying, it's a captivating story about China's unwavering dedication to connecting people, boosting regional growth, and rewriting the very definition of a traditional airport. Excavator Let's now talk about something more impressive. The world's largest excavator, a massive marvel built by the German company Krupp back in 1978. This engineering masterpiece, surprisingly still operational today, boasts a heart of electric motors, each churning out megawatts of power, enough to light up a small city. That sounds cool, yes, but what if this spectacle needs to be relocated? In 2001, it embarked on a legendary 22-kilometer journey, conquering diverse terrain, farmlands, minor roads, rivers, and even a railroad track. Talk about a real-life transformer! Another such masterpiece is a cluster of interconnected towers, each soaring a quarter kilometer high. Think of these horizontal skyscrapers boasting a breathtaking glass gallery, offering panoramic views for the estimated 3,000 daily visitors. But here's the jaw-dropper. This heavenly bridge weighs a staggering 40,000 tons, with 12,000 tons crafted from glass. Think of the sheer logistical feat of hoisting a substantial section of this skyscraper to its dizzying height of 250 meters. It's another proof of China's audacious ambitions in the world of architecture. Speaking of ambition, across the Pacific, an American named Tim Brown took a different approach to big moves. He managed to relocate his historic house a staggering 900 meters, shelling out a cool $400,000 for this remarkable feat. This wasn't your average weekend project. Tim's house, a whopping 480 square meters of living space, still stands strong after its epic journey. To achieve this, Tim built a temporary high-rise structure next door, showcasing not only his dedication to preserving the historic house, but also some serious engineering ingenuity. It took a staggering eight years of preparation, a true testament to perseverance. Innovation is constantly propelling the world of heavy transport forward. One such development comes from Mamamo, a company introducing hydraulic trailer-mounted boosters that can propel the six axles of even the heaviest cargo. These boosters, packing over 1,000 horsepower and a staggering 40 tons of tractor force, are conquering challenging terrains with ease. They can even be connected to different trailers to handle lengthy loads and navigate tight corners with impressive agility. The future of heavy transport is looking bright, with efficiency and adaptability at the forefront. This whirlwind tour wouldn't be complete without a nod to China's high-speed rail revolution. China boasts a mind-boggling 40,000 kilometers of super-fast tracks. That's more than double what the rest of the world has combined. And guess what? They're not slowing down. One particularly exciting project is a 1,629-kilometer route from Sichuan to the captivating Tibetan capital, Lhasa. This engineering marvel climbs mountains, crosses earthquake zones, and even traverses glaciers. The projected completion date for this high-altitude odyssey is 2030, with a price tag of a staggering 320 billion yuan. But China's ambitions extend far beyond this single project. Their ultimate goal? A jaw-dropping 70,000 kilometers of high-speed rail by 2035, a network that could practically wrap around the Earth twice. While the pace might be slightly slower than their initial plans, the sheer scale of this vision is mind-boggling.
more projects. Let's now delve into one of China's most audacious construction projects, a water pipeline stretching from pristine Lake Baikal all the way to China's heartland. Think of it like a watery highway aiming to quench the thirst of over half a billion Chinese citizens. But this ambitious plan comes at a steep price. The potential depletion of Lake Baikal, the world's cleanest, largest, and deepest freshwater lake. This ecological treasure isn't just a visual marvel, it's a haven for unique flora and fauna. Tapping into its pristine waters, a collaboration between Moscow and Beijing has sparked controversy. Russian authorities face a delicate balancing act, fulfilling China's relentless demand for fresh water while preserving a natural wonder. Meanwhile in Guinea, China secured the rights to the Simu Iron Mine, a massive iron ore deposit nestled within the Simu Mountains. This one boasts a staggering 2.4 billion metric tons of high-grade ore, enough to fill your imagination. This move dealt a blow to Australia's iron ore ambitions, and China is pushing forward with a 2025 operational target for the mine at a jaw-dropping $200 billion price tag. So how does this connect to Lake Baikal? The Russian government facing freshwater scarcity in Gansu province wants to tap into Lake Baikal's waters. The plan involves a massive pipeline traversing Mongolia and the Gobi Desert before reaching Gansu's capital, Lanzhou. While technically feasible, the project goes beyond quenching China's thirst. China envisions itself as a water market leader, not just supplying its own citizens, but exporting this fresh water to other nations. The proposed 2,000-kilometer pipeline would be a monumental feat, requiring pumping power comparable to a small hydroelectric plant. The cost of pumping water could be highly profitable, making this a potentially lucrative venture. As an alternative, China has also considered transporting water via rail tankers, a 12,000-kilometer journey. Preparations include building a massive bottling plant near Lake Baikal. Yet the biggest question remains, can Lake Baikal's fragile ecosystem withstand such a massive project? China's ambitious plans and their media portrayal raise concerns about the ecological impact and potential propaganda. The Russian government's control over water sales to China adds another layer of complexity. The proposed Lake Baikal pipeline is an undertaking of unprecedented scale. While it aims to combat drought and water scarcity, the ecological balance of this natural wonder hangs in the balance. Here's to hoping that future generations can still enjoy the blue eyes of Siberia in all its pristine beauty.